thanks for checking out our newest release called Ember. Just wanted to do a short walkthrough here, give a little bit of a demo of some of the options in here to take a look at. So when we load the template up, it's going to look a little something like this. And let's just walk down through some of the layers here. So right off the bat, some of the options that we have here are certain different shape effects for the background. Um, so we have a square here, circle, a triangle, diamond, rectangle, and then we have kind of some scattered dots here. And of course within each of these groups here are some of the layer style effects. So those can be changed and, or, or moved, you know, if you want to customize that. There's also within each of these a color change option. So if, so if you want to colorize the effect, you can do that. Um, right now this effect is set to hue, so it continues to maintain this glowing type of effect. Of course, you could always change this down to, you know, normal and then adjust all of your uh, saturation, lightness, and things like that to get specific colors. So however you like to customize that, those options are there. Um, in here is also some text options, so we can turn the text box on, and then again, the same effects are applied to the text, and then these are just regular um, text layers that can be edited like normal text. Let's disable that. Uh, also in here is a custom logo option, so you could turn on and maybe put like a team logo or something like that in here. Now to update this team logo, let me walk you through that real quick. So it's pretty simple. This is set up as a smart object. Again, same effect the layers are applied as the uh, other shapes here. All we need to do is edit this smart object to update this. So, and it, it'll tell you here, edit smart object and drop in the new logo as a transparent PNG. So that's the one trick to this. You need to make sure that the new logo is a transparent PNG. But if we double click on the smart object here, it's going to open up a new document window. You're going to see our team logo in here as a new layer. So I'm just going to disable this. And then from here, all you really need to do is just have your new team logo handy, again, as a transparent PNG. We're just going to drag and drop that in here. I'm going to go ahead and transform this um, to be roughly the size of the document. We'll apply it. And then once I close this, it's going to ask me if I want to save the changes. I'm going to say yes. And then if we go back here, you can see it's just updated and applied those effects to that team logo. So pretty easy to, to drop that in and update for a custom logo. Um, so let's turn some of the effects back on here. Um, down here, there's also a few smoke options. So you can get a few different effects about how that smoke interacts with the background for different subjects and things. You might like different looks. You could even even turn you know several on at once if you wanted to really exaggerate that smoke effect there. So options there as well. And of course you could change background colors and all that uh, with the HSL layers as, as per normal in a lot of my templates. Um, so let's drop a subject in. So we can throw a subject in here. I thought I've been over this in a couple other videos before but I'd like to throw it in just anytime there's a background effect here uh, just a couple tips that are pretty easy on how to help your subject kind of interact with that background a little bit better. And so what we're going to do first is on the subject layer, I'm going to double click out here on the layer to bring up our layer style panel. Now from the layer style panel, what I'd like to do is turn on the inner glow. And I'm going to go over to the inner glow here. I'm going to pick a color. You could sample a background color, but if you take notice the way this effect is set up, there's this reddish, orangish type of edging. So if you're keeping the default effect here, I'm going to choose more of that type of color. We'll see if we can sample it. It's starting to get there. I'm going to pull it here. I'm actually going to pull this down to the red. So it's, it's, it's not red, it's not orange, but it's kind of a mix in between, something like that. And then I'm going to change this from screen to a color dodge blend mode. And then I'm just going to play with the size and things here. Size and the range. And let's bring the opacity all the way up so we can really see what's going on here. So the size is going to be how wide that transition is from the inside of the subject uh, inwards. The range is going to be what kind of transition, if that's like a hard transition or a smooth gradient. So I like to leave the range pretty high. So between the range and the size, and maybe that'll give us something about like 
that's looking pretty good. All right, I'm going to click OK. And then what I want to do is I want to right click. Right now this is affecting everywhere in the subject around the outsides. I want to right click here on the effect and I'm going to create a layer out of this. And then I'm going to select this new layer. I'm going to hold Alter Option and add a layer mask to hide it. Then what that will allow me to do is take my brush. I will bring the flow up a little bit. White brush, I can paint in where I want this effect to show up. So let's get down kind of the back of the arm here. And if you go too much, the good thing is you can just switch to a black brush and you can paint that effect off. And the lower your flow, the more subtle you can kind of paint these effects in where you want them. So maybe the shoulders a little bit, that arm, and a little bit on the hair, something like that. And then one other little uh, change I'm going to do here, I'm going to add between this layer and the subject, I'm just going to throw in a blank layer. I'm going to go ahead and set this to a color blend mode. And then with my brush, I'm just going to sample one of these medium tones back here, somewhere about this orange. And then I'm just going to paint over the edge of our subject where there might be some, some light coming in here. So there's not going to be a whole lot. We don't need to do too, too much here. And then one little tweak I'm going to do is just double click on the layer style here. I'm going to work with Blend If. Um, and again, if you're not familiar, Blend If is just controlling where this layer shows up. And so we've got our shadows, we've got our highlights on this underlying layer. I'm going to pull this slider up and you can see that it pulls that layer that we're currently on off of the darker areas and only affects the lighter areas. But to refine that, I'm going to hold Alter Option, split this into two sliders, and then I'm going to use this to refine where that little orange painting is that I painted on there. Just so it doesn't look kind of like blocky and funky, just to smooth it out. Something like that looks pretty good. I'm going to click OK. And so that's just a couple of little quick effects to just affect that little edge lighting on your subject, and it really makes them feel like they're standing in front of this object a little bit more. So there's also some foreground effects that you could turn on with some Embry type of effects here. Of course, you could color those uh, the same way. And so that's how to uh, kind of little run down through this template here. Hopefully you guys get a lot of use out of this, and I hope it makes you a ton of money.